It's back to work at the Freeport Container Port. New tonight on our news live at 7. The layoffs of 20 employees have been reversed. We'll tell you why. And a teen dies during a basketball game in Mason's edition today. What police are saying about the investigation. Plus, how you can spot counterfeit cash and protect your pocketbook. And then in our news at 7.30, why the head of the Consultant Physician Association says a COVID spike may be inevitable. Our news live at 7 starts now. Welcome to our news live at 7. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Candino Knowles. We are following the death of an 18-year-old woman after a basketball game in Mason's edition early this morning. The incident is now under active police probe, what investigators are saying in a moment. But first, swift intervention by the prime minister has led to the reversal of a decision to lay off 20 Freeport Container Port employees. A statement from the Ministry of Grand Bahama confirming the decision today. Last night, we reported on the exercise at the port this week that saw some 20 longtime employees given their walking papers. Earlier today, Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Fred Mitchell called an impromptu press conference on the island saying government was given little notice about the layoffs. One of them, as I understand it, is that you're to notify the minister in writing 14 days in advance of any proposed redundancy, laying out the numbers, how many people you intend to lay off, that is, uh, what their names are. There's also provision in the act that if you don't follow those rules, particularly as it uh, um, uh, relates to 20 people or more, there is uh, an additional 30, uh, the, the law calls for an additional 30 days of pay to be given to an employee where those rules have not been followed. And Mitchell saying he saw no reason for the layoffs. During the pandemic, shipping companies made a fortune, a fortune, and you cannot tell me that because you have some reverses uh, in recent times, that that makes up for uh, all of the profits that were made during the time of this pandemic. Uh, it just comes off as unconscionable. All right, and Mitchell had a lot more to say on the matter. We'll have more on that story coming up in our news at 7.30. Now to that investigation into the death of an 18-year-old following a basketball game in Mason's edition early this morning. Megan Shepard was on the scene and tells us the incident has left the community shaken. Shortly around 9.45 a.m., police were called to the Mason's Edition Park, where an 18-year-old woman collapsed while playing a game of basketball. According to police press liaison officer, Chief Superintendent Chrislyn Skippings, the incident is currently classified as a sudden death until more information becomes available. We are going to have an autopsy performed to find out exactly what went wrong why she collapsed on the park today. We can't say if she had any previous medical condition or known to have any. And so once we find out exactly what went wrong, we will definitely update the press as it relates to this particular situation. We understand that she is an 18-year-old resident of the community. And so you can see that this community of Mason's Edition is visibly grief-stricken at this time. She confirmed there were no signs of bruising or lacerations. At this time, I'm told now, she was actually engaged in playing basketball. They were actually playing basketball when she collapsed and, and dropped. Chief Superintendent Skippings also notes that people on and around the court attempted to offer assistance to the victim. She is encouraging Bahamians to take the initiative to learn some form of CPR. And after they realized that they couldn't, they were able to contact EMS who came and recognized that there were no visible signs of life. I would encourage Bahamians and residents to reach out to, you have Red Cross, you have some of the medical facilities around, reach out to them and see if you can learn at least the basic steps in CPR. Because one day you never know when you can use it. And that very time that you use it, you can actually save a life. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. A 46-year-old man from Treasure Key, Abaco, is in custody after police say they found a large stash of drugs on the island on Wednesday. Police finding 15 croca sack bags with over 260 blocks of suspected marijuana. That's not all they found. While they executed a search warrant on the home on St. Andrew's Drive in Abaco, officers say they also found ammunition. And two firearms and 390 rounds of ammunition, including several 
gun magazines were found by Drug Enforcement Unit officers on Wednesday. Police say they found the weapons shortly before midday after a search of an abandoned building in southwestern New Providence. No arrests have been made. It's time now for your first look at temperatures across the islands. And standing by in the Weather Center is meteorologist Greg Thompson with the latest. Greg? Yeah, thanks, Kendino, and a happy Thursday evening, everybody. A pretty nice evening setting up for us. Temperatures a lot cooler than they were the last evening now at 74 degrees outside our studios. Passing clouds, your winds are out of the southeast at 6 miles per hour, and your feels like temperature also at 74 degrees. Temperatures around family violence right now at 75 in Freeport, 76 in Marsh Harbor, Abaco, as well as in Alistown, Bimini, and in Great Harbor Key. Over in Governor's Harbor, 77, 77 also in Nicholstown. Central Bahamas, we have 77 in Kemp's Bay, 79 in Arthurstown, Cat Island. We pick up 77 in Copentown, San Salvador. Over in Georgetown, 80, Deadman's Key, Long Island. You are also 80 at this hour. And into the Southeast Bahamas, temperatures near the 80 degree mark there with 81 in Duncan Town, Ragged Island, 79 in Colonel Hill, Cricket Island. We pick up 80s in Delectable Bay, that's in Acklands. Over in Abrams Bay as well and in Matthew Town, in Agua. Also, our neighbors to the southeast, Turks and Caicos Islands, you currently round our temperature profile out at 80 as well. Well, we're watching a frontal boundary that's pushing across central Florida. Showers and isolated thunderstorms associated with that boundary is weakening as we speak. High pressure dominating our weather that made for a lot of blue skies today. Not much in terms of any uh, significant shower activity. There's also an upper level low that's spinning just across the Hispaniola area. That's going to lend support to some isolated showers across the southeast Palmas as that system drifts towards the uh, west. Eventually, that will be picked up by that upper level trough that's generating the front, and that will sling that out towards north and east and away from us, but the front is expected to get into our area late tonight and early Friday morning. Should be moving across Grand Bahama with a couple isolated showers. And uh, of course, as I mentioned, this frontal boundary will continue to weaken as it pushes towards the south. That's your first look at weather. Stick with us and look at your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come in our news, how educators are keeping a close eye on COVID cases around the world and what it may mean for education here at home. And pay to ride. New details revealed about the school bus program for students on New Providence. And nobody likes a fake. Tonight's Consumer Report teaches you how you can spot counterfeit cash. It's all coming up when our news returns. that a new COVID variant is spreading rapidly in some countries. Education officials here at home are on high alert. Students had to use a virtual online learning platform when the pandemic began in March 2020. President of the Bahamas Union of Teachers, Belinda Wilson, says they are monitoring the situation. If need be, or if there, there's a need to revert to the virtual platform or to online learning or to um, do an adjustment from fully face-to-face -to, -face to partial face-to-face, -face. Um, we will definitely be giving our recommendations to the Department of Education for their consideration. Our Jamila Mizek has a comprehensive look at the issue coming up in our news at 7.30. Well, it's a program designed to decrease violence on and off school campuses, especially after school hours. During that time, a pilot school busing program rolled out this week on New Providence with the aim of getting students from school campuses safely home. Coordinator of the school policing program, Chief Superintendent Chasewell Hanna, spoke about the cost of the initiative. This is at no cost to the government. Students would normally pay their bus fare when they walk to the bus stop. What we are essentially doing is bringing the bus stop on campus for safety purposes. All right, so they'll pay as usual and they'll have the convenience of having the buses here on campus. So this isn't a private enterprise. Now the pilot program is currently active at 15 schools, all junior and senior public high schools in New Providence. Hannah explains how it will all work. At 2.30, all of the junior and senior high schools in New Providence, there will be uh, certain um, bus drivers approved through the road traffic department who would come on each campus prior to the dismissal of school. And they will be working along with the principal and our school resource officer 
to get those kids who needs to get on the various buses on the bus and they'll be shuttled to their destination. Despite a downward trend of reported cases of counterfeit bills, the central bank still remains concerned and is encouraging residents to take extra precautions when completing transactions. Our Joshua Williams has this. Imagine getting home from the food store and checking your purse, only to discover that the change you have received was counterfeit. Or stopping to get ice cream only for the vendor to tell you that the dollar bill you presented doesn't feel right. It turns out that's not so far-fetched. That's why the Central Bank of the Bahamas is calling on residents to protect themselves by getting familiar with security features on their banknotes. Deputy Manager for the Currency Department at the Central Bank of the Bahamas, Brett Lashley, pointing out some of those features. Here's a good example, the, the 50, you should see that sawtooth pattern on the hummingbird moving up and down as you tilt the note. Um, you wouldn't see that on the counterfeit. Similarly, with the security thread on the back, you should see some sense of motion or movement as you tilt the note back and forth. Um, you don't see that um, on the counterfeit. The central bank has also provided a phone app for help in recognizing authentic banknotes. It will tell you some features that you can either feel for look for, some things you can do to tilt the note back and forth, or certain spots on the note to check to verify the authenticity of your banknotes. Um, it's a quick and easy way um, to remind yourself and familiarize yourself with the qualities of Bahamian banknotes and some of the key security features that you can look for. Lashley also encouraging residents to exercise patience when conducting transactions. We do encourage people to be very vigilant, as I said, when handling um, their banknotes. Take a look at them, because unfortunately, if you are um, in possession of a counterfeit banknote, the liability is generally yours, and um, there's no way for you to redeem that note. A commercial bank won't redeem it for you. Um, we won't redeem it for you here at the Central Bank, so the liability is really yours once you've received the note. Reporting for our news, I'm Joshua Williams. When our news comes back from the break, we turn our spotlight to stories making headlines across the world as a Beijing hospital runs out of beds as COVID spikes. Plus, how climate change may be linked to extreme weather. And later, a Bahamian WNBA star celebrates a birthday on this day in history. We'll tell you who on the other side of the break. This is our news. Welcome back. We turn our attention now to stories making headlines across the world. The COVID-19 outbreak in China has stretched public health facilities resources in the capital Beijing as beds ran out in an eastern hospital by mid-morning Thursday. The resurgence follows China's abandonment of its pandemic restrictions last month after nearly three years of lockdowns, travel bans and school closures. Meanwhile, a growing number of governments are requiring virus tests for travelers from China. U.S. House Representative Kevin McCarthy faces growing pressure to end the impasse over his imperiled speakership bid after two consecutive days of failed votes. An 11th House Speaker vote got underway earlier this evening, making this the longest speaker contest in generations. McCarthy has continued to negotiate with a group of hardline Republicans who derailed his bid, proposing key concessions in his push to get more votes. The House can't kick off the new Congress or swear in new members until a speaker is elected. Tens of thousands of mourners watched as Pope Francis presided the funeral of former Pope Benedict, who he compared to Jesus. The Mass was celebrated by 125 cardinals, 200 bishops, and about 3,700 priests. His death was a loss for conservatives who yearned for a return to a more traditional church symbolized by Benedict. I'm very happy to be here. He was a great pope. 
and he left the church with his legacy of being friends with Jesus. He died saying Jesus loves us as his last words. And he, in his pontifical magisterium, taught us to meet Jesus. Otherwise, our life has no meaning. Gracious Father, we commend to your mercy Pope Emeritus Benedict, whom you made your successor of Peter and the shepherd of the church, a fearless preacher of your word, and a faithful minister of the divine mysteries. And finally, for the first time in Jamaica's history, paternity leave and adoption leave are now in effect in the nation's public service. Finance and Public Service Minister Dr. Nigel Clark announced the update in a tweet on Wednesday. The leave, which took effect January 1st, grants males a period of 20 working days with pay for paternity and adoption leave. Employees are entitled to adoption leave on no more than three occasions. And it's no secret that weather around the world is changing. Higher temperatures, stronger storms, extreme conditions, and tonight's Sustainability First report examines the relationship between climate change and wild weather. Here's Christina Dragovich. Bahamas First, putting sustainability first for our people and our environment. What's first for you and the planet comes first for us. There is mounting evidence that human activity and climate change are linked to extreme weather, including heat waves, rain, and flooding events. A 2022 study mapping how climate change affects extreme weather around the world found that 71% of 504 extreme weather events and trends were made, quote, more likely or more severe, end quote, by human-caused climate change. So what does that mean? Peter Stott, a climate scientist and professor, says global temperatures paint a picture. What may seem like a, a relatively gradual increase in global temperatures is going to have a very substantial impact on extremes. What it is doing, and we're seeing this more and more frequently, is it's making um, previously um, unprecedented extremes much more likely. It's making the chances of record-breaking extremes much more likely. The study also includes Hurricane Dorian's extreme rainfall over the Bahamas in 2019, with the Bulletin of the American Meteorological Society noting human-caused climate change increased the likelihood of Hurricane Dorian's extreme three-hour rainfall amounts and total accumulated rainfall by 8 to 18 percent and 5 to 10 percent, respectively. It's making those, uh, those heat waves more intense. So it's really adding to the to the fuel, if you like, of, of those weather events when they're forming, which is part of the natural processes of our climate. When they are forming, it's making them much more substantial, much more intense, and therefore the impacts are seeing um, much, much greater. Reporting for our news, I'm Christina. Still to come in our news today in history, find out interesting facts about the day that was January 5th, as the King's pardon transformed the Bahamas' reputation as a pirate republic. Plus, Greg is back with your extended weather forecast. And then in our news at 7.30, Catholic Archbishop Patrick Pinder reflecting on the impact Pope Benedict XVI had on the church. That's coming up when our news continues. Welcome back to our news. It's time now to turn our spotlight on events that shaped the day that was January 5th. Take a look. On this day in Bahamian history, January 5th, 1994, John Quell Jones was born in Freeport, Grand Bahama. The now professional basketball player plays power forward center, most notably for the Connecticut Sun in her Women's National Basketball Association and two other European basketball teams. Jones is credited for a $10,000 donation to Hurricane Dorian relief efforts. On January 5th, 2000, hours before he was scheduled to hang, convicted murderer and well-known beautician John Higgs took his life in his prison cell. He, along with 27-year-old convicted murderer David Mitchell, were scheduled to die the next day. He was found by prison guards with a deep incision on his right wrist. 50-year-old Higgs was convicted in October of 1995 for the July 1993 murder of his wife, Joan. 
Trial evidence revealing that Higgs murdered his wife in an argument and buried her body in a concrete stairwell of an apartment block on Step Street in Fox Hill. She was the granddaughter of Governor General Sir Milo Butler. On appeal, he won a retrial but was convicted a second time on August 6, 1996. A thank you letter from Higgs mysteriously delivered to then talk show host Obi Wilchcombe was read on radio. Wilchcombe was later jailed for four days for contempt of court during a coroner's inquest where he refused to reveal where he received the letter. Then in 2004, taxi driver, trade unionist, politician, civil and political rights activist James Joseph Isaac Shepard died in New Providence. Following the formation of the Progressive Liberal Party in 1953 as an active supporter, he ran in the 1967 elections, winning the St. Michael constituency. In 1970, in a split within the PLP, Shepard and seven other PLP MPs moved a vote of no confidence against then Prime Minister Lyndon Pindling. They were expelled from the party when the motion failed and later merged with the United Bahamian Party to form the Free National Movement. The party was founded at Shepherd's home on Fox Hill Road on October 20th, 1971. And finally, a state funeral at Zion Baptist Church was held on this day in 2012 for the late Sir Clifford Darling, the fourth Governor General of the Bahamas. Sir Clifford died on December 27, 2011. He was 89 years old. Sir Clifford, whose political career spanned some 30 years, held the positions of Senator, Cabinet Minister, Deputy and Speaker of the House of Assembly before being appointed Governor General on January 2, 1992. In the 50s, he was actively involved in the trade union movement as President and Secretary General of the Bahamas Taxi Cab Union. He played a leading role in the general strike of 1958, which blocked and closed the airport. That does it for us at News at 7. Joining us now is our Italia Hall with the latest headlines. Tonight on our News Italia. Live at 7.30, inevitable. Well, we are calling what doctors are saying is an inevitable spike in COVID cases and the latest on those recent layoffs in Grand Bahama. Tonight on our News Live at 7.30, inevitable. Tonight on our News Live at 7.30, inevitable. First in our news, the head of a doctor's association says a COVID spike may not be avoidable. Our birthing McDermott has the details. But first, the decision to lay off Freeport Container Port workers is reversed. The details straight ahead. Plus, a top real estate agent is optimistic about growth on Grand Bahama. Why this may be the time to invest? And a little later, Archbishop Patrick Pinder shares a personal experience of time spent with the late Pope Benedict XVI, who was laid to rest today. Our news live at 7.30 starts in a moment. Welcome to our news and thank you for joining us. I'm Italia Hall. Another possible surge in COVID-19 cases has local physicians putting residents on alert. Why they are saying you should keep your guard up in just a bit, but we begin with this. One day after there was a massive layoff exercise at the Freeport Container Port, it appears that decision has been reversed after the Prime Minister stepped in. It came hours after Progressive Liberal Party Fred Mitchell called an impromptu press conference in Grand Bahama. This city uh, just seemed to be catching a break and on an uh, upward uh, trajectory and for these developments to happen uh, just seems uh, unfortunate. That's the chairman of the Progressive Liberal Party, Fred Mitchell, insisting all private and public entities on Grand Bahama need to pull together for the success of the island and questions whether or not the Freeport Container Port followed the law. One of them, as I understand it, is that you're to notify the minister in writing 14 days in advance but the decision by officials at the Freeport Container Port did not last long. The Grand Bahama Ministry releasing a statement this afternoon that says, following the swift intervention of the Prime Minister, the decision to lay off those 20 employees at the Freeport Container Port has been reversed. But earlier today, Mitchell called the ordeal unfortunate, as residents on that northern island are still trying to rebuild their lives following Hurricane Dorian. He also says government only found out about the layoffs on Wednesday, January 4th. 
Mitchell confirming that the prime minister reached out to Freeport container port executives on Thursday morning. His view is that the matter should be reversed. It should not have happened. And he says that he saw no reason for the layoffs. Uh, during the pandemic, shipping companies made a fortune, a fortune, and you cannot tell me that because you have some reverses uh, in recent times, that that makes up for uh, all of the profits that were made during the time of this pandemic. Uh, it just comes off as unconscionable. The chairman says he's aware that there are a number of complaints. What has happened, we understand, is that the number of work permits has actually increased not decreased mm -hmm. uh, since they had Bahamian management running the company. Uh, so we have to find out why that is. Well, we are continuing to follow developments out of Grand Bahama and a little later. We'll tell you why one veteran realtor on the island is saying now is the time to invest. While following a COVID-19 committee meeting on Wednesday evening, Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Michael Darville says there will be no new restrictions. The decision comes as COVID-19 cases surge in other countries. Some countries, like the United States, are requiring negative COVID-19 tests from travelers coming from China. This revelation comes after the emergence of a new Omicron COVID-19 variant. That's been cited as the cause of surging COVID numbers in other parts of the world. Speaking to reporters this week, Dr. Darville says officials are closely monitoring the situation. While the threat of another surge in COVID-19 cases is imminent, according to Consultant Physician Staff Association, which is advising residents to keep their guard up, Berthry McDermott tells us more in this report. Amid the threat of another COVID-19 variant, Consultant Physician Staff Association President Sabrika Butler-Pinder is predicting that another spike in COVID-19 numbers is inevitable. The news comes amid the emergence of another COVID-19 variant that's surging in other parts of the world. And we know that that is how um, the virus perhaps spread throughout the world. And, you know, we're unfortunately not unlike some other countries. And so when we have a boosting economy and we're seeing the airports full and hotels Hotels are full and that sort of thing. It behooves us to think that, you know, we're going to also have a similar thing happen. And so with that in mind, we have to still make sure that we can do as much as we can to safeguard ourselves and not be reactionary. In late December, the U.S. Center for Disease Control revealed that XBB 1.5 variant accounted for 40 percent of cases in the United States. The CPSA president suggests Bahamians take the initiative to keep themselves safe. Sometimes we don't need to wait um, um, for the ministers of health and, and others to tell us to do these things. We have to take care of our own health. Wear your mask if you know you're going um, to be around places that you have no control over. Certainly busy places like airports, airplanes, even though they're not mandatory, we have to use our own wisdom as well. Now, as it relates to travel, Dr. Pinder Butler is advising Bahamians to be extra cautious when leaving the country. We know that, um, you know, persons have been on lockdown and some persons have not been able to travel for a very long time whether it be personal or business and so it is a challenge to restrict certain movements but I think as we move we just have to be mindful of our movements. Reporting for our news I'm Berthony McDermott. And if the new COVID variant prompts another rise in cases, how will that impact the country's education system? Our Jamila Mizik has answers from education officials in this report. During the global pandemic, students in the Bahamas had to use a virtual online learning platform. Now that a new COVID variant is spreading rapidly in some countries, education officials here are on high alert. President of the Bahamas Union of Teachers, Belinda Wilson, says they are monitoring the situation. If need be, or if there, there's a need to revert to the virtual platform or to online learning or to um, do an adjustment from fully face-to-face -to, -face to partial face-to-face, -to -face, um, we will definitely be giving our recommendations to the Department of Education for their consideration. Acting Director of Education Dominique Russell confirming that the online learning platform is still functional should a rise in cases occur. 
we have a lot of different ways that children can learn um, and we have allowed our teachers to utilize other platforms besides our LMS. You know, they've used the Zoom, they've used um, Google Classroom, you know, and so we don't see that being an issue. Um, children will be afforded the opportunity if, God forbid, that um, we have a rise in cases. The education director says today some students in the Family Islands are still using the virtual learning platform. We are providing education for you know, children in an archipelago, and so the virtual platform will not go away. We, we see the value of it, and we will certainly continue to use it because it, is, it will be used to augment what we're doing in the classroom. There are programs that our children are interested in that we may not necessarily have the uh, financial capabilities of, of bringing in a teacher for, and so we want to ensure that the children are not disenfranchised, and so that's one of the reasons why we utilize the virtual platform. Reporting for our news, I'm Jamila Missick. Thanks for that report, Jamila. Pleasant conditions in the capital tonight. Meteorologist Greg Thompson joins us from the Weather Center. Good evening, Greg. Yeah, thanks, Italian. and welcome back, everybody, for our second look at weather on our second half of our newscast. 74 degrees outside our studios right now with some passing clouds. Your winds are out of the southeast at 7 miles per hour. That's pumping in that warm air mass, and your feels like temperature standing at 74 degrees. Satellite view, frontal boundary pushing across central Florida with some showers and isolated thunderstorms associated with that boundary. will continue to move towards the south and east. Should get into the northwest Bahamas late tonight, early on Friday, passing actually across the Grand Bahama area sometime about. 7, 8 o'clock in the morning and then moving through the capital by tomorrow afternoon. Not much in terms of a cool down behind this front but we do expect a couple of isolated showers uh, as this frontal boundary pushes through. Maybe shave off a couple of temperatures of uh, high temperatures into the weekend. That's your quick look at weather. Stick with us. Look at your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news why one real estate agent says now is the time to invest in the market and how you can get started. And a teen dies on a basketball court. What police are saying about the sudden death. And later, the Catholic Archbishop reflects on the late Pope Benedict XVI. Stay with us. Police were called to the Mason's Edition Park this morning where an 18-year-old woman collapsed while playing a game of basketball. According to police press liaison officer Chief Superintendent Christling Skippings, the incident has been classified as a sudden death for now. We are going to have an autopsy performed to find out exactly what went wrong, why she collapsed on the park today. We can't say if she had any previous medical condition or known to have any. And so once we find out exactly what went wrong, we will definitely update the press as it relates to this particular situation. We understand that she is an 18-year-old resident of the community, and so you can see that this community of Mason's Edition is visibly grief-stricken at this time. Skippings confirmed there were no signs of bruising or lacerations. At this time, I'm told no. She was actually engaged in playing basketball. They were actually playing basketball when she collapsed and, and dropped in. I know That's when things went wrong. Police in Grand Bahama Niger are help searching for the suspects responsible for stealing a boat on Tuesday. Police received a report shortly after 9 a.m. that a blue and white 32-foot center console sentry vessel with two 300-horsepower Yamaha engines was stolen from a home in Fortune Point in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Now anyone with information on the case is asked to contact police at telephone numbers 911-919 or the Criminal Investigation Department at 502-9991. If you live in western New Providence, you may have noticed scores of police officers during your commute home yesterday, and here's why. Officers from the National Pro Crime Prevention Office conducted a special operation from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. in the areas of West Bay Street, Gladstone Road, and Carmichael Road. 63 citations were issued for traffic infractions. Two people were arrested for outstanding warrants, and 27 vehicles were examined. A veteran realtor on Grand Bahama expressing optimism and hope for 2023. He says with a number of projects on tap for the island, now is the time to invest. Megan Shepard reports. 
Broker of James Sarles Realty, James Sarles, says 2022 was a good year for the island of Grand Bahama, and he is optimistic that momentum will continue into this new year. With a number of projects breaking ground, including high-end hotel chain Six Senses, the $300 million Carnival Cruise Port, Doctors Hospital, and more, Sarl says the island may finally be poised to be the bride rather than the bridesmaid. People are excited about Grand Bahama again. We had a busy year and there was lots of people from the U.S. A lot of boaters have come down here on the high end because we have so much marina space and so much opportunity. So uh, I'm looking forward to 2023. He says opportunities for investment are vast and the international community is showing interest. You know, we really have a lot to offer here and uh, people are starting to step up to the plate. He also notes the tax benefits. With the Hawksville Creek Agreement, you know, for foreigners, there, there's no real property tax. That's incredible for people to come down here and say, gee, there's no taxes, close proximity. I can dock my boat here. I can have a beautiful home, reasonable price. All the services here, now doctors, hospitals here and different amenities. And so on every price level, there's unique opportunity. Sarles adds that while the island needs a major hotel, Bahamians have been capitalizing on the ever-growing Airbnb market. Reporting for Our News, I'm Megan Shepard. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the break, the Catholic Archbishop reflects on the life and legacy of the late Pope Benedict XVI. Plus, coming up in sports for this evening, Buddy Heal and his Indiana Pacers taking the floor once again, trying to stay hot. We'll also tell you how DeAndre Ayton and his son still struggling to get back into the winning groove. That's coming up in sports. Plus, you don't want to miss this. Students awarded for their stellar academic performance. Our News speaks with one of the winners when Our News Live at 7.30 continues. This is our news. Welcome back. Pope Benedict XVI was buried today in the crypts under St. Peter's Basilica, the same spot where Pope John Paul II was originally interned in 2005. Today, the Archbishop of Nassau, Most Reverend Patrick Pinder, sat down with our Christina Dragovich to discuss the late Pope. Millions of Catholics from around the world tuned in this morning to watch funeral services for Pope Benedict XVI, who left a lasting impression on the Catholic Church around the globe. He was a man of enormous talent. He was an enormous gift to the Church. Um, certainly his, his passing is a, is a loss to us, but his life was a tremendous gift to us as, at the same time. The Archbishop of Nassau describes the late Pope as a man of great humility and recalls meeting with him one-on-one -on -one during an ad limina visit to give a formal update on the diocese. I had been told that uh, Pope Benedict was a very strict man. You know, th there was the talk that he was the Panzer Cardinal, he was uh, God's Rottweiler, he was the German Shepherd. And so I was quite um, uh, nervous going in to see him for my ad limina visit. But when I met the man, I found someone who was perhaps the most serene and the most uh, gentle and um, attentive person I've ever met. Archbishop Pinder says that meeting was one of the highlights of his life. But the Archbishop explains the late Pope also made huge strides for the church around the world, not only speaking on global migration, but also taking a stance on a controversial issue for the Catholic Church. But he also was perhaps the, the first in the Vatican bureaucracy to take the issue of 
clerical sex abuse very, very seriously from his days as a prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, and even as, as Pope himself, he was the first Pope to actually sit down and meet with victims of sexual abuse. Um, he was a very, very deep thinker. He had a profound knowledge of our, our entire Christian tradition, and he had the courage to actually resign when he felt he was no longer able in body and spirit. Reporting for our news, I'm Christina Dragovich. Thanks, Christina. Well, tough losses for both Buddy Hill and DeAndre Aiden. Meanwhile, the UB Mingos able to tally a win in local hoops. Marcellus Hall is up now with a check on sports. All right, thanks, Natalia. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcella Hall. Buddy Heal is Indiana Pacers. They've been playing some good basketball as of late. Last night, taking on one of their Eastern Conference rivals, the Philadelphia 76ers, and doing their best to keep that win streak alive. Doing their best does not always add up to a win. Buddy doing extremely well, but in overtime, they come up just a bit short. Let's take a look at those highlights. Buddy Heal and his Indiana Pacers on the road against his Philadelphia 76ers. Pacers have been playing much better basketball as of late. And uh, last night, no different except for one major detail. They did not get the win. This one going to overtime, 76ers stealing it 129 to 126. Now, uh, Buddy did have a chance to win it over in regulation, but uh, his floater would fall short. They go into the overtime, eventually lose. As for Buddy's stats, uh, he played a total of 41 minutes, almost every second on the floor, 24 points. He also had nine rebounds, six assists, and a couple of steals to throw in. Unfortunately, though, it did not add up to a winning effort. And the Pacers now go down with the loss, looking to see when their next game is going to be. Well, that is indeed going to come your way on Friday when they take on the Portland Trailblazers. As for DeAndre Ayton, he and his Phoenix Suns, They've been having a tough go of it as of late, especially without leading scorer Devin Booker, who's out injured. Well, buddy DeAndre trying to do his part, but Cleveland just a bit shy in this one. Cleveland, uh, Phoenix just a bit shy in this one as Cleveland gets to win 90 to 88, ends up being the final score. And uh, well, another tough loss for Cleveland for the Phoenix Suns. They fall to eighth now in the Western Conference, just barely holding on to a playoff spot. Taking a look at DeAndre's stats on the night 36 minutes he played, and he also had 15 points, 18 rebounds, one assist, and a steal. Again, does not add up to a win for him. Phoenix Phoenix Suns now back to the drawing board. They're going to try to see if they can pick up a win in their next game, which will come your way against the Miami Heat on Friday. And that's your check on Sports Free here on this Thursday. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you, Italian. Still ahead on our news tonight, meet one of the All Bahamas Merit winners. The story straight ahead. And we're looking forward to beautiful conditions as we get ready for the weekend. Your extended forecast is coming right up on the other side of this break. Welcome back to our news. Some breezy conditions may be ahead. Greg is back in the Weather Center with your extended forecast. Yeah, thanks again, Natalia, and welcome back, everybody, for our final look at weather. We are tracking a frontal boundary that's pushing across central Florida. A couple of isolated showers associated with that boundary, but it, as it continues to push towards the south, it is weakening as most of the energy is now out towards the north and east and away from us. There's high pressure across our area that generates some rather nice weather for us for the past couple of days. That high is eventually going to slide out towards the east overnight. That's going to be paving the way for this frontal boundary to get in here. So we're looking at, as I mentioned, some isolated showers with the front, but behind the front, high pressure will build back in across area so we're looking at some rather nice weather for the weekend in the meantime we have an upper level low that's spinning just to the south of Hispaniola that's going to support a couple of isolated showers across the southeast Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands but as that front pushes towards the east it will grab that upper level low and pull it out towards the north and east and we're looking at improving conditions for the weekend future forecast showing that frontal boundary across the uh, Florida area right now it's going to be sliding towards the south and east as I mentioned it should be moving into the uh, Grand Bahama Freeport area sometime tomorrow morning. Uh, looks as though 11 o'clock we could see a line of isolated showers associated with that. Upper level low will continue to generate a couple of isolated showers. Most of that will be offshore and then of course that frontal boundary getting out of here and nice beautiful conditions expected for the weekend. 
Boating forecast for the Northwest and Central Bahamas tonight. Your winds will start off variable, light and variable tonight through tomorrow early. But once that front boundary goes through, our winds will swing out towards the north and northeast. Uh, picking up speed at 10 to 15 knot seas running 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. Your high tide was at 6.52 tonight. For the Southeast Bahamas, we have that caution flag still in place for you guys. Tidal pressure gradient down near east to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots. Seas running 4 to 6 feet over open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look at your extended forecast. A couple of isolated showers, as I mentioned, tomorrow with the frontal boundary, but those temperatures taking a dip. They're getting down into the 70s, and then we could see a little bit of an isolated shower activity on Monday. Of course, the remainder of the week looks rather nice. That's a look at our weather. Back to you, Italia. All right, thanks so much, Greg. Well, young people around the country awarded scholarships and grants for their academic performance. The Ministry of Education hosted its annual Bahamas All Merit and National Merit Scholarship Award ceremony this morning. The scholarship division of the ministry rewards students each year who stand apart from their peers and show excellence in their work. One of the All Bahamas Merit winners, Maya Tilburg, sharing what the award means to her. And I must admit, it feels great. The excitement really hasn't faded at all. Little did I know that a year could pass and my journey as an ABM scholar would continue to feel so surreal. I'm living the dream. I expected starting university to be a heart-wrenching awakening. I expected to feel the weight of all my family's hopes for me pressing down upon me. I expected the accolades to fade and the harsh reality of what it means to be a student on scholarship to set in. Yet here we are, a year later, and I'm optimistic. Education Minister Glennis Hannah Martin offered congratulations to all of the awardees. Your accomplishments are the e exemplification of a potent combination at you. of discipline, dedication, and a consi consistent pursuit of excellence. This formula has yielded spectacular dividends, which today we celebrate with you. Indeed, the nation not only celebrates with you, but we celebrate you, our sons and daughters, because you represent the possibility of all that our ancestors dreamed of. More stories like this and all of today's top stories, visit rnews.bs. And remember, you can share your favorites right from the R News Bahamas Facebook page. And with that, we thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Italia Hall. We'll see you tomorrow night. Have a great evening.